Well, morning, Dave. Nice to, to catch up with you. First of all, I just want a, an update on everybody. Clean bill of health. Obviously, been a lot of tests before you going into the season. Is everybody okay? We've got one or two, as um, I'm sure most clubs have. Um, but whoever's fit and available will be uh, in contention. Is everything free from COVID nineteen tests? That's that's what I was just. Ah, hoping right. yeah, for, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's you know. I don't think we've had one. In fact, we haven't had. I know for a fact we haven't had one um, positive test. And we've all we all got tested last Thursday. I think we got tested the week before that. Um, and obviously, early on in pre-season, I think we've had three tests in the last five, six weeks, something like that. And with every single member of playing staff and playing squad and staff have um, have come back negative. Well, you've probably had roughly about two months of hard work and get yourselves prepared and ready. A couple of games involved in that, real competitive games, of course, in the cup ties. Are you ready now for, for that next challenge for League One football? Well, yeah. Listen, if, we, if, if we're not, then we'll get us come up tomorrow, so we've got to be. Um, it's a challenge we're all looking forward to. It's probably going to be one of the most stiffest tests of the whole season. Um, Let's be honest, there was two divisions between us last year. Um, but that's, that's what football's about. And these are the challenges that we want to be involved in. So we're, we're really looking forward to it. You've had a little taste of last week against a, a League One side that consolidated last season in Lincoln City. You've already just mentioned, of course, Charlton were in the Championship last year. But just your view of it, what are you expecting different? What would you think you're going to come up the big difference from League Two to League One. I think I think the the, the pace of the games are going to be just that little bit um, sharper. I think the players on the whole will be just that little bit more athletic and a little bit quicker. And I think the the, the level of football will just be that little bit better. It's, it sounds uh, obvious, but I do. You know, the standard across the board is going to be better. So we've got to make sure we are at that standard or better to give ourselves a chance of winning the games, games of football that we that we uh, partake in. Everybody connected to their football club, Dave, will have their own targets. No matter w what we say, we all have targets because that's what we're in the game for. We love it. Players have them. Fans will have them, even though they won't be in the ground for the first few months. Do you have targets? And if you do, do you express them to your players and your staff? Yes and yes. You feel that's a good thing, do you? That you could, you could talk and t that they can find out exactly what, what, you, what you want, what your ambition is? I think, yeah. For, for me, yeah. I think um, there's no point me thinking one thing and the players thinking another. We've all got to be on the same page and if we shoot for the moon, we might just get to the stars. Well, getting to the stars was what Wickham did last year. Is that achievement, what they did, something that you can use, a club like Wickham? Yeah, listen, I think, I think what Wickham did, you know, it just epitomises why we're all emotionally invested in the, the romance of football. Um, that's why we love the game because I don't think anybody um, maybe even the most ardent Wickham fans would have predicted promotion to the championship but they've been a stable League One club for a good few years so it's not a massive surprise um, however they did ever so well and there were a lot of um, uh, opinions of whether they should have been in the playoffs but I think that even fueled their fire just to prove in the playoffs that they were extremely, that, you know, that they deserve to be there and, and they deserve their promotion. So, seeing something like that does give, I think, every club belief, whether it's us or Rochdale or Wimbledon or Shrewsbury or never mind the bigger clubs in this, this league. So, we, we can't take that as motivation on our own or, or, or see that as, a, as an edge because I think there'll be other clubs that'll be in the same boat. The one thing in your role, in your job, is pressure. There's no doubt about that. You're under pressure. But... Pressure's for tired, Graham. Yeah, I'm just going to come to it. I'm trying to, trying to look at it. 
when I look at the, the overall view of a football manager, probably 90% of them are under pressure because of the way that they're, they're run with their, with their football clubs. They've got to get results. When you came into this job, it was a tough time and it was a dangerous time as well. Touch wood and fingers crossed, you're moving great, rightly in the, in the right direction. But you seem to thrive on it, you seem to love it, you seem to enjoy it. Is that, is that how, you, how you take the job? Yeah, listen. If you do something, love, you never work another day in your life. It's as simple as that. I've said it, I say it to the players often. I could be in a factory plucking chickens when we hand up the rear end of a chicken gate as your butts out. Uh, let's be honest, I don't think anybody, when they go to the careers officer at school, says that's the job they want to be. Mm. And as a football manager, I'm no different. And I know that's a very stark reality. Maybe not plucking chickens, but something mundane that I don't want to do. So whatever you're in a position of trust, um, then you're going to try everything you can to be a success. And that's that's all I that's all I do. I, I, I try and enjoy it. Um, it isn't easy at times. They are extremely long days, consistently, constantly. But then, like I just said to you, if if you do something you enjoy and you love, you never work another day in your life. And that's the way I look at it. Just apart from playing, it's the second best job in the whole world. How proud are you then that you you know what happened to your club last year? yourself individually as well winning the LMA manager of the year and here we are on the eve now of taking them back into League One and leading them into League One the, the football club yeah it's it's Christmas Eve I said it last week it's Christmas Eve today you know yeah there'll be no present wrapping no midnight mass there might be a few prayers but there'll be no midnight mass um, and it's <laughs> it's <laughs> it's, it's 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 always the, the 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 most optimistic day of the whole year for me because everyone thinks that their team is going to be brilliant, um, you know. So it's 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 a you know we feel as though we're a League One team. We feel as though we should be in League One, and we're going to find out over the next few months exactly how much of a League One team we are. Yeah, it's not the be all and end all, as you say. There is a lot put on that. First game, first result. We all know what happened to you last year on the opening day of the season and what happened at the end of the season. So it doesn't significantly mean anything for, for what it is. As the old saying goes, it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah, we, were, we lost last season 3-0 and got promoted. We, the previous season we won 6-0 and didn't. So if you want any indication how relevant the first game of the season in isolation is, well, there's the, the, you can just use our two most recent seasons as an indicator or, or lack of. Um, however, you want to win every game and we'll be no different tomorrow afternoon come three o'clock. Five new signings have arrived. How happy are you with that recruitment? Because already we've seen a few of those new boys in there and, and some of your homegrown players as well have progressed in, into, the, into the setup all, already. Happy with what you're going with? Yeah. Look, we, we feel as though we've recruited well so far. Um, you know, we, we, we always try and improve the team. That's that's the nature of you know the business, and, and that's the ultimate goal for recruitment. Um, we feel as though we've we've recruited in the areas we needed to recruit in. So, you know, it's, it's it's easy for me to say all these words and wax lyrical about it. The proof will be in the pudding, like I say, over the next few months. Um, we've got to make sure that the players that have been brought in and the players that were already here improve, make us better as a team, you know, improve them individually. And if that's the case, then we'll hopefully have another successful season in however way we define that. The one thing that you just briefly touched on earlier was about Charlton Athletic, where they were in the Championship last season. Are, are you able to look at what they've been doing in the pre-season? Have you been able to get reports and, or watch videos? Are, are you prepared well? Because it is that first game of the season as if it was five or six games down the line. Yeah, we watched them in person last week at Swindon. We've seen another game from pre-season. You've got to be careful because 
some managers try things out and do different things. And obviously, personnel change all the time. Um, you know, they didn't have two players available last week, for example, on international duty. So, you know, we, we've got to try and look for trends, but also try to look for specifics as well. So, we've done we've done our work on on Charlton, but as was the case, you know, as is always the case. We have to concentrate on ourselves and if we perform like we know we can, we'll be a match for anyone in this league as well. Well, we'll all be getting ready to pick your team. We'll hear it on BBC Radio so around about two o'clock. I know you're not going to give anything away, but you will have Will Yaskalina back in your squad as well after the international duty. You've got some interesting selections to uh, put on that team sheet for, for the weekend. Yeah, well, it's uh, part of the job. It's part of the job. Um, you know, and we'll we'll try and pick. Well, we will pick the team that will we feel as though it gives us the best chance of winning the game. It's as simple as that, and and we've got to show them how to try and win the game, and hopefully that will uh, manifest itself tomorrow afternoon. One final point: the chip shot paper has been flying around again. Can you tell us anything about the chip shot paper that's got Perry NG heading to Nottingham Forest? Um. That chip shop paper hadn't flown into my inbox <laughs> or my office. Um, it's, I think it's an easy assumption when a, a team like Nottingham Forest sell a right back to assume, um, you know, if we've got a good right back, that he'll be the replacement. We haven't heard anything from Nottingham Forest. I haven't even heard a whisper. So, whichever chip shop that's come from. I think um, you should concentrate on battering this fish, probably. <laughs>